Hi, welcome to episode eight of the Just One End podcast. My name is Elizabeth Zimmerman, but you can call me Liz. I am coming to you from Cochranville, Pennsylvania, where I live with my husband, Greg, my two children, Eric and Tilda, and our dog, Millie. You can find me on Ravelry as Algebrina um, and Instagram, actually. I have the same username for both. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Algebrina. Um, it has been a really busy couple of weeks. Uh, I actually did record a podcast episode last week, but I felt really weird about it. Like it just, I wasn't flowing and it was going to take a lot of editing to make it usable. And I just, I wasn't feeling it. So I scrapped that one. I decided to, uh, record another episode instead. Um, I'm going to blame it on the eclipse. I, I recorded it actually in the middle of the eclipse. So <laughs> So it just kind of felt weird outside. Like I'm in, uh, where we are, we were in like 77% totality, something like that. So it wasn't hugely noticeable, but it just like the light was just kind of odd. So um, I'll actually put in a picture of what I got from the eclipse. I know you've probably seen a million eclipse pictures by now, but um, this is the sun coming through the window in my hallway. Um, and you can see it, uh, the, the light filtering through the, through the leaves and the trees, and it's pretty cool. So um, a week ago, Friday now, um, I was telling you last time that I was going to sing at the Orioles game. Um, so I did do that. Um, <laughs> it was pouring down rain right before the game, and there was a bit of a delay. I think it was like 45 minute rain delay. Um, so I wasn't positive it was going to happen. But uh, we did sing the national anthem, and then the ladies of the group sang um, This Land is Your Land during the seventh inning stretch, which, let me tell you, that was way more nerve-wracking because the anthem, first of all, we've done it before. This was actually our fourth time doing it. Um, you're out on the field. Uh, you're basically facing the jumbotron, so you don't really, you're not really looking at the crowd. Um, and you just, you know, you just sing the song and you're done. Um, the seventh inning stretch, um, first of all, you don't know exactly when you're going to, to sing because it's at the, it's in the middle of the seventh inning. So depending on how quickly it, the team that's batting gets out, depends on when it is that you're going up. So we're just kind of sitting there waiting to go at any moment, um, from the beginning of, from the middle of the sixth inning on, we're just like getting ready. Um, then you are standing on top of the Orioles side, the Orioles team dugout, um, and there are people literally two feet in front of you. <laughs> you're up, you're up, raised up on the, on the dugout and there's like no handholds or anything around you. So you just kind of feel exposed anyway. And you're facing the crowd this time. So I'm like making eye contact with people <laughs> as I'm singing the song and, and it's just, I don't know. It's a lot more nerve wracking, but it was so much fun. It was, yeah, it was a, it was a blast. I hope that next time, um, if we sing the anthem again, uh, that we do it on a Friday game, uh, at home, because apparently that's the tradition is to do this land is your land, um, during the seventh inning stretch. And they also did fireworks during the anthem. So like when the rockets red glare, they shoot fireworks off, which was very cool. Um, I do have some video. I'm going to stick it at the end. Um, they actually do provide the official feed. Um, I don't think any of it gets televised, but they do have it up on the Jumbotron. So they have like recordings of it. Um, they're going to send that to us eventually, but they haven't sent it to us yet. And I don't really want to wait that long to show you guys. <laughs> so I'll post up the videos that uh, like friends and family took. Um, and I'll put those at the end. So if you're interested in checking it out, they'll be at the end and you can see this. Um, I also did my personal yarn crawl that day. Um, I checked out three yarn stores in Baltimore. Um, so I'll talk about each of those as I go through um, the acquisition section. Um, let's see what else happened recently. Uh, so that was that Friday. The Eclipse happened on Monday. Um, oh, and then upcoming... Um, my son, Eric, he is, uh, he turned five in April, so um, he is starting kindergarten this year. And tomorrow is his first day of kindergarten. Um, I am already a bit of a mess. Um, I was, I, it's, it's a pretty good transition because my kids do go to daycare full time, so he's already used to like a classroom teacher, other kids setting. Um, and I'm used to, you know, dropping him off at the beginning of the day and seeing him at the end of the day. So, so that separation won't be so hard. It's the 
I know that it's a new experience for him, so I'm kind of like scared for him. I don't even know if he's scared, but I'm emoting it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna start crying now. Um, <laughs> but like I was talking to his teacher about his bus driver, his uh, daycare teacher, about the bus driver that takes them from school to daycare. And all she did was like say his name and say, you know, the bus driver is so-and-so and he puts the kindergartners in the front and my eyes just like, oh, like tears immediately. So I am going to be a mess tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm already planning on wearing sunglasses to hide it as much as possible to not make my son upset. Uh, but we'll see. He said he wants to ride the bus by himself. Um, it'll be his first time alone. We actually don't know that many of our neighbors, so he'll be making friends on the bus, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so that's all tomorrow. So a bit of an emotional roller coaster that I'm already preparing for. Um, but you know, it's life. Um, yeah, so that's some life stuff going on. Um, oh, and then of course I've got my craft room. You may notice that I am recording from a new location yet again. Um, I have moved all of my crafts, well not all, I've moved a lot of my yarn and such off of the bookshelf that I was using as a backdrop um, and I've put it into some cubes, cube storage. I have not figured out exactly how I'm going to or organize my craft room still. I think I'm going to make a run to Ikea at the nearest, um, at the soonest that I can find the time um, since the closest that, I think I have three Ikeas that are all just about an hour away. So <laughs> lots to choose from, but it's gonna take an hour to get to any of them. So when I find the time, I'll go, um, I'll get a big table. I already use a big table um, from Ikea as my desk for work. I love the workspace um, and that lets me spread out, uh, but that one's in use. So <laughs> I'm gonna get another one of those, um, get a big table in the middle. I'll be able to put my sewing machine on it. I'll be able to use it for laying things out, um, put blocking boards on it, things like that. Um, and then, I don't know, I just got to figure out how to make everything work in here. So it's a work in progress. Um, when I get it set up, hopefully I'll do a bit of a tour. Uh, I'll show you what, I, what I've what i got set up. Um, but yeah, it might be a little while until that actually happens. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's It sounded like a lot before I actually listed it all out. <laughs> but anyway. So knitting content wise though, um, I'm actually glad that I decided to wait a week to, um, to record something to go out because I have an extra finished object. So I have three finished objects today. Um, the first one is a pair of socks. I had shown these last week. I think I had, I think I had one turn to the heel and that was it. Um, so now those are done. Um, these were originally intended for Eric. They are DK weight yarn. It's KFI Luxury Cashmere Collection. Um, it's a DK weight yarn. I was intending to make them for Eric, like I said, but um, I did not, I, I cast on too many stitches. Um, I've never done DK weight socks before, so I wasn't really sure what to expect with doing them. Um, so I cast on 44 stitches using a size 11 size 11. I cast on 44 stitches using a size 3 um, needle. I don't know what millimeters that is, but um, it was way too big for him. But it fit my foot perfectly. So <laughs> so they became socks for me. Um, this is actually what I was working on at the uh, Orioles game though. Um, where they had us, where they had us uh, seated was just behind the first, first base um, and a lot of balls I'm flying into that section let me tell you I think probably at least 15 balls during the time I was sitting there I only stayed through the sixth inning and then we sang and then um, I actually caught the train home because I'm really far away um, we did win which was great I just didn't get to hang around to see it <laughs> but um, so all of these balls were flying in and I just had this image of like sitting there knitting my socks and then um, either a ball flying in and conking me on the head I was you know, paying attention. I was trying to watch, but, um, or being able to like lift up my project bag and have the ball fall in, <laughs> which I think would have been hilarious, but never actually happened. But maybe next time. <laughs> um, my next finished object is actually a weaving project. So I showed this to you last time I was uh, working on it. I do have it finished. So, um, so this is a scarf, uh, that I wove. I'll show you the length of it. 
Um, this it is actually this is about as long as I could make the warp um, on the table I was using, so that's why it's this length. <laughs> but um, I made it using the yarn that came with the Cricut loom, um, just a blue and a purple. Um, I don't really know what it is. I think it's uh, it is wool, um, but that's really all I know about it. Um, I, I had so much fun making this though. It was really cool to pick up weaving and try it out. Um, and you can see that I actually improved. So this is the, the start. You can see the edges there. And then you can see by the end, they're not perfect, but you know, certainly much more even. Um, and then the class that I was watching on Craftsy, uh, too, you know, she was saying so many new weavers obsess about their edges. Um, but you know, remember it's a handmade item. It doesn't need to look perfect and like it was made by a machine anyway it, it is made by hand so so I like that that um, point of view so that's my first finished weaving project um, I haven't put anything else on the loom yet um, I did pick up some cotton yarn I'd like to try making some dish towels um, I'd like to do like a plaid look with um, I got yellow and white um, so we'll we'll see how that goes hopefully I'll be able to, to start that soon um, and then my third finished object is my exploration station. So I am really excited that I got this done. Um, this is what I had not had finished by the time I recorded last week. Um, but I was on the last section. And I figured, oh, I'm, I'm so close. I'll, I'll finish it soon. But by the last section, <laughs> you were at like 400 and no, 300, I don't know, between three and 400 stitches per row. Um, and I think I had like six more rows left and then the bind off and that took me pretty much all week. Um, and that's knitting monogamously too. I didn't really work on too much else. You figure it's like 470, I think it's like 471 stitches or something like that. Um, at the very last row and then you do an I cord bind off. And of course with an I cord bind off, um, it's three stitches that are just kind of, they're knit to make a bit of a tube. Um, so for every one stitch you're binding off, you actually knit three stitches. So you end up, um, you know, knitting over 1400 stitches <laughs> just for the bind off. So you can see why it takes a while. But, uh, so this is my expiration station. I'll get as much of it into the shot as I can. I love it. It is so much fun. The colors are just gorgeous. I can get closer so you can see the colors. You can see me through it too. It's a bit lacy. <laughs> um, I will, I did find some ball bands. So the, um, the dark purple here, which as always shows up a little bit more, um, uh, maroon than it really is. It's actually really a very deep purple. Um, this is from the neighborhood fiber company, which is one of the places that I stopped, um, on my yarn crawl. So that's the ball band. Um, I picked up all of these yarns at Maryland Sheep and Wool, actually. Um, this is the Capital Luxury Lace, which is why this is the one that gave me trouble about the weight. Um, the Capital Luxury Lace base, which is 80% wool, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Um, and the color is Truxton Circle. So that was the dark purple. Um, the the whitish purple green variegated one here, right here. Um, that is from Tempting You Yarns. I couldn't find the ball band for that one. Um, I do have another yarn from them. So I'll show you what their, what it actually does look like. That's what their tag looks like. Um, this is obviously not the same yarn, but <laughs> I found that the colorway is called Purple Lollipop. Um, so that's what that one is. The, um, dark green variegated here and then the lime green I got from um beach painting gal who I haven't found an online presence for um but I did find the tags the um oh sorry I found two tags for the same yarn so I'm not sure what one of the colorways is I'm thinking the lime green I'm not sure what that one is but the dark um the dark green is called uh, rainbow rapunzel so um like I said I got them at Maryland sheep and wool um, and yeah, I just, I love it. I'm so excited to be done with it. I did take some finished object pictures, so I'll put those up, um, here. You're probably already looking at them. Um, but yeah, 
I love the size of it too. It really is something I can wear actually as a shawl. Like a lot of shawls, they're um, a size where they work well as like a, sharp, uh, a scarf style around your neck. Um, but this one really is big enough to drape over my shoulders and really provide full coverage. Um, I think this will look great with like a nice uh, black dress, especially just something to wrap around. So that is my exploration station. Okay, so moving on from finished objects, um, I do have a couple of works in progress. Um, I'm going to call them active whips because um, I obviously have a lot of works in progress. Actually, every um, project bag behind me has a work in progress in it. <laughs> uh, some of them I haven't touched for a while, but yeah, each one of them is um, occupied with something that I'm working on. So my active whips, I just have two. Um, first, since the socks that I had promised to Eric um, turned out to be too big for him and turned out to be socks for me, um, I did cast on another pair of socks for him. So this is the sock I'm making for him. Again, it's a Rose City Roller. Um, the colorway is called Sprout, and this is the Tweed base. I think it might have a, another name, but it's, um, it's the Tweed from Beautiful Mess Yarn Works. Um, and actually, I did find this ball band too, so let me show you that. So this is the ball band. Um, it's actually her old logo. Um, her new logo is a knitting needle and a crochet hook. Uh, crossed, which I really like. I I recently found out that there's like crochet prejudice in yarn stores sometimes, which anyway, I won't get into that. But <laughs> anyway, um, so it's a beautiful mess yarn works uh, yarn colorway sprout. Um, and again, I'm using the Rose City Rollers uh, pattern. It really is my go to someday I may branch out. Um, this is a progress keeper that I actually got with the last installment of um, the Andre Sue Knits Sock Blank of the Month Club, um, which if you remember, it was a, a deer print, which is really cute. So it came with a little deer stitch marker, uh, progress keeper, whatever you call it. Um, this is actually slightly too big for him. I did do all of the gusset decreases and I started just doing the length of the sock. Um, and it's it's just a bit baggy. So I'm going to go back to the de gusset decreases and then I'm going to keep going with those decreases a, little, a couple more stitches uh, before doing the length of the foot. So hopefully that'll fit him. I've, I'm really trying to figure out exactly how to make socks that'll fit my son well. Um, the problem is he's growing. So <laughs> since we have already bought new shoes for him twice this summer, I think. Um, yeah, they're... If I make them fit perfectly, then he won't wear them for long. But if I make them too big, then he can't wear them yet. So I've got to figure out the right balance for that. The project bag that I'm using uh, is my drawstring bag from Steel City Stitcher um, with the box. Very cute. I'm not huge on drawstring bags. I think this is actually the only one I have. Um, but I'd like to try some more. I think they, they're they really handy for um, little projects like this, like socks. Socks are great for a little drawstring bag. Um, so my next whip and the last whip that I'm actively working on um, is, yeah, so I call it my project of shame. Um, I mentioned in an earlier episode that I did a craft swap with somebody. Um, she sent me a baby quilt. I'm supposed to knit her a poncho um, that matches one that she bought in a store for her daughter and that her daughter is now outgrown. Um, holding up my end of the bargain, um, I have started working on it. It's taken me longer than I'd like to admit. First of all, the summer got me really distracted, so I didn't jump on it like I should have. I should have just started at the beginning of the summer, but I didn't. So, <laughs> so time caught up to me. Um, but I've also bought yarn for this like three different times. Um, I've actually cast it on at least a dozen times now. Um, I am not working from a pattern. I'm working from the poncho itself. So she sent me the poncho. This is what it looks like. She got this at like Target or something, I think. Um, you can see the front has a beautiful cable and seed stitch pattern, and then the hood has these really cute ears. Um, and the ears are the most important part to her, so I had to make sure that I <laughs> got the ears in. So, um, so I'm not working from a pattern. I'm just trying to match this as closely as I can. Um, I did go with a DK weight yarn to make things, um, first of all, a little bit faster, and I wanted to make sure that it would have a good weight to it. Um, fingering weight probably would have 
given it a really nice drape, but it would have taken forever and I'm not sure I'd have been able to, um, to make it work out. Which is why I bought yarn so many times because I do have a fingering weight yarn with sparkle. I got a DK weight yarn which doesn't have sparkle, which I don't love. I really wanted it to have the sparkle because the original one does. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some sparkle in there. Um, but I, I prefer the DK weight yarn for the project. So no sparkle, but um, it won't be the end of the world. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to just match the pattern. So what I've done is I have made the hood. Um, so this is the hood. I have holes for the ears. So I'm going to make the ears separate, um, put some fabric in them to make them nice and thick, and then I'm going to sew them in. So the holes are there for the ears. Um, I have the ribbing on the front. Uh, I've got it shaped hopefully pretty well. Um, and then I've got live stitches on the end to do a three needle bind off to match it to the body. Now I did start the body. Um, like I said, I've cast this on probably 12 times and ripped it out. <laughs> so I'm happy that I have this. Um, the body is going to be a little bit more tricky. I did start off trying to do the cable and the seed stitch the way that this is. Um, because I'm using DK weight yarn, I can't do the braided cable exactly the same because it's, um, it's just too thick and it would be, it would, they would be huge. Um, I also tried to do the seed stitch and it just doesn't look right. So I'm going to start it again today. Um, and I'm going to do just a twisting cable with just two that twist over and over. Um, and instead of the seed stitch, I'm just going to do pearls. Um, so I think that'll look nice. Uh, I hope, um, <laughs> And then I just, I just need to get it done and off to her, especially because it's the season for it now. You know, it's, we're getting into fall. It's not quite fall yet, um, but we are definitely hitting the point where she's going to be able to use it. So I want to um, get that into her hands um, sooner than later. So the yarn that I'm using, though, is uh, Wanderlust Hues. Um, it's showing up a bit brighter in the camera it's actually a little bit paler than that it's not quite so vibrant pink um, but this is the first class dk base which is 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon um, which means it is going to be machine washable which i did want um for because it's for a little girl so you want moms to be able to have it nice and easy um this is part of the P palm springs collection um, and the, the colorway is that pink door so um, I believe what Wanderlust Hughes does is they will do collections based on travels or travel destinations. So, so this is the Palm Springs collection. Um, so that is, that's my second whip. That's all I'm working on now because, well, first of all, I need to be monogamous on it in order to get it done. So that's why I'm not casting anything new on, even though I finished my exploration station. So I'm itching to cast <laughs> something on. Uh, but I will be casting on something else as soon as I finish it. As soon as I get it off my plate and um, to its recipient, then uh, I've got a lot of projects just waiting to be cast on. So, so hopefully next time you'll see more whips um, and that will be done. Okay, so that's it for whips. Okay, so um, I've got some acquisitions. Um, I'm not even going to bother talking about the yarn diet. No, not yarn diet. Who knows what I'm doing? I just, I'll show you what I got. Um, <laughs> so I did have a couple of things that were in the mail. Oops. I did have a couple of things that have been in the mail, um, that I knew were coming. So, oh, actually, no, let me show this first. So, um, one thing that I did a couple of weeks ago is I went to the, um, sip and stitch night at the Red Hound Grill in Paoli, Pennsylvania. Um, it's not that close to me. It's like 45 minutes away, but it's one of the closest yarn event, knit night get togethers. Um, so I went there and I won the door prize. So uh, so I got a little bit of yarn from um, Barocco. I got the Chinchilla yarn, which is 100% rayon. It's this great um, gray, this nice gray color. Um, I got two balls of that. And I think I'm going to try and use this in some weaving. I think that would be a great um, use for it. And then I also got the latest issue of um, interweave knits. So, so that was really fun to, you know, it's always fun to win stuff. So, <laughs> so I got that. 
Um, in the mail, I had ordered some yarn from um, House of Yarns, which is based in Tennessee, um, Nashville. And they have currently, I think they still do, um, they have some stranded dye works. Um, Amy was there for SSK, which is the Super Summer Knit Along uh, retreat. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think that House of Yarns has um, whatever stock she had left over from the market there. So, so they've got a bunch on their website, um, and I snagged some. So I got her Paradise Base, which is 801010 Superwash Merino Nylon Cashmere, uh, fingering weight. And I got it in Highway Code, which is this gray. It's showing up a little bit purple on the screen. I don't think there's actually any purple in there. Um, she does have a purple gray um, colorway, but that's not this one. Um, and then I also got uh, Hazardous, which is this um, more natural base with some neon green and yellow. And then this really cool, let me see if I can get it, uh, really cool orange. Look at that. Yeah, so this one's a lot of fun. Um, so I got uh, two, two skeins of that. Um, I also had supported a Kickstarter um, for, I have to remember who it is, uh, Round Mountain Fibers. Um, so I think that one of the owners is in one of the Facebook groups I'm in. So they had posted, hey, we've got a Kickstarter going on. It was to um, do some work renovating their studio. Um, and I supported that. Um, so I supported that and the prize uh, or the, not prize, whatever they call it, whatever you, the, the, I don't know, maybe this price, <laughs> whatever you get for supporting them, um, was skeins of yarn. So, um, it is this beautiful, it's a bit dark, so it's kind of hard to see, uh, or to get it to show up, but it's this great, um, gray to blue to purple to black, um, variegated yarn. It is gorgeous. So I have three, three little skeins of that. It's 50 grams each. Um, it's hundred percent superwash merino. So I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet. Um, but it's going into the stash. Actually, I'm going to stick it on a bookshelf right now. Um, and then my last online order was from, um, an Etsy shop from a simpler home. Um, Justin and Caleb, uh, handmade goods. Um, and it says hand, handmade items full of fun, personality, and creativity. Goods for you and your home. So I picked up uh, two things from them. I, first of all, I picked up a project bag. Um, I have run out of project bags. I have too many projects for my bags. <laughs> so I need to add to my collection. Um, so I picked up this bee print, which is bright yellow and just so much fun. Um, it's very nicely constructed too. This thing can stand up on its own. Like, look at that. That is sturdy. So, <laughs> so I have um, that project bag, and then I also picked up a um, hand embroidered, hand embroidered um, flower sack towel um, with these lavender on it, which is beautiful. Um, I think this is going to go in my kitchen. I have already warned my husband that he's not allowed to touch it, especially with dirty or wet hands. Um, <laughs> so. Hopefully that'll last. Otherwise, it won't be in my kitchen anymore and we'll have to put it somewhere else. So that is uh, what I had online. Um, the rest of my acquisitions, I'm trying to figure out where to put things. Um, the rest of my acquisitions are from my personal yarn crawl um, that I did last Friday uh, while I was in Baltimore. So my first stop um, was is located on Falls Road. It is right by the light rail station that I used to go to practically every day. Um, when I was uh, finishing up school, I went to University of Baltimore. Um, I actually moved to Pennsylvania during that time, which was a bit of a commute. So um, then I'd park at the Falls Road light rail station. I'd take the train in because the train stops right next to University of Baltimore. Um, I hate city traffic. I hate driving in the city. So I use the light rail as much as I possibly can. Anytime I go to Baltimore, um, I did use it last Friday as well. Um, so they are right there, right next to the Baltimore, uh, Falls Road light rail station. So I, um, I love that little shop. It is so nice. It is, it has a very warm feeling. Um, there's a lot of wood, um, like their shelving is these, uh, crisscross wood diamonds. 
Um, the it, It's an old house. Um, it's just a very cozy, warm feeling there. Um, so it's a beautiful shop. I got to meet some lovely ladies, um, including Ashley of the Misadventures of Knitting uh, audio podcast. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Tara also works there, but she wasn't there that day. Um, so I just got to... Uh, uh, me, Ashley, and spend some time chatting with her, and that was, it was just really cool. So, hi, Ashley. Um, <laughs> uh, and I also got to meet some other ladies and got to sit there and knit for a little while, um, working on my exploration station. Um, so I picked up a few things there. One thing I picked up is um, a book on weaving. I picked up Weaving Made Easy, um, which is uh, 17 projects using a rigid heddle loom, which is what the Cricut is. It's a rigid heddle. Um, so I just... You know, I want to be able to venture out with my loom, so I picked up a book to be able to do that. Um, I also picked up a cute little Notions case. Look how cute this thing is. It's like a little suitcase. <laughs> and it has little sections, so you, um, you open the top and you open the side, and they each have a cover um, on their individual sections, so things aren't going to go flying out. Um, and this one, you know, there's like little individual doors. It is so cute. So I picked up that, um, that Notions case. I also, well, I got a tote bag. Um, they have a frequent buyer club. Um, and if you bring in your tote bag, uh, you get five points toward um, your frequent buyer um, purchases. So it's, you get a dollar per point for, for regular priced items. I may get this all wrong, so don't quote me, but I think it's a dollar per point on regular priced items. Um, and then, when you get to 200 points, then um, you get $15 off. So, so great. If I was living closer, I would take more advantage of that. <laughs> um, and then I also picked up, oh, I also got some um, stitch stoppers. Um, just little foamy things to put on the end of my needles. Um, and I got some yarn. I picked up, they have... Um, they have a lot of a lot of uh, brands that they carry, but the ones that I remember, um, Madeline Tosh, Rowan, uh, Sweet Georgia, um, a couple others. Um, but I picked up some Madeline Tosh unicorn tails. Um, we all know me and my obsession with minis. So I got this one, which is Arctic. This is the Arctic colorway. It's a dark blue. Um, I got this one, which is Death by Elocution, which is this great purple magenta. I need that to focus. Um, kind of purpley pink. It's really pretty. Um, and then this bright yellow that is called Edison Bulb. If I make it bigger, it'll <laughs> focus on more surface area. Maybe not. So, uh, so I got those minis, which I'm going to put into my mini bowl right there. Um, I also picked up some um, fiber. So I've mentioned before I'm taking a spinning class in October. So I'm not going to touch this until then, but it was on sale. So <laughs> I figured I'd pick some up. So it's Sweet Georgia. It's um, a six pack. Um, it is Sitka. Maple, Storm Chaser, Tapestry, Tavern, and Spring Garden. Um, so it's a little one ounce of each. Um, and I thought that would be great for when I start spinning, I can um, use this. So it's a hand dyed superwash blue face luster. So I picked that up and then I picked up two more skeins of yarn. Um, if you remember, I had some fingerless mitts that I showed in my first episode. Um, I don't have them with me anymore, but those were made out of Claudia hand-painted yarn. Um, I do not know where I picked up that yarn. It may have been at Knitter's Day Out one year. It might have been the very first time I went to Maryland. I'm not positive, um, but it was really great yarn. I really liked it. And then I found that um, Woolworks carries Claudia hand-painted yarn. So I got two. I got Violet... Limoges, <laughs> I'm not sure that's how you say it. L-I-M-O-G-E-S. So that's a great purple with um, like an olive and some gray and some darker purples. Um, and then I also got one, so it's called, oops, 
I don't know if that means it's a one of a kind colorway because there was a mistake or if it's actually called oops. So <laughs> I don't know which, but it is a um, blue and there's a little bit of purple and some gray in there too. So I picked up those. Um, and that was what I got at Woolworks. So that was it for, for that day. Like it wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> so I picked that up. And then after I left Woolworks, after I sat and knitted and chat for a, chatted for a while, um, I went to the Hampton neighborhood, which is also on Falls Road, and went to um, Lovely Yarns. Um, so Lovely Yarns, I do have their card. Yeah, it's right here. So, like I said, they're located in the Hampton neighborhood of Baltimore. Um, the really cool thing about their shop is that they specialize in local indie dyers. Um, people from the surrounding area, so other parts of Maryland, a little bit in. I think they had some from Pennsylvania, New Jersey. So, a general area of indie dyers. Um, and just this gorgeous wall of bright, um, vibrant, just so pretty um indie dyed yarn i did take some video at each of these um stores so hopefully i'll be able to do a bit of a montage at the end the end of this episode might be pretty video heavy between the anthem and the um you know the oriole stuff and in the yarn tour <laughs> but we'll see how it goes um so yeah so they had this great indie dyed wall and then they also had a wall that was called their tasting wall and they had some um unique um, fibers like they had some paper yarn and uh, steel wrapped in silk yarn um, just these really cool yarns um, that you could buy by the ounce so they had them on cones and you could wind some off and, and buy just um, smaller amounts of it which was really cool um, I didn't actually try any this time but if I ever go back then I'll definitely plan to um, so I did pick up some yarn there as well. Um, Breadalicious uh, is the maker of these minis. I don't have the colorways, but I got a pink one and a green one and a blue one. These are from Breadalicious, and I'll find the information and put that um, on there. So that's one of the local dyers that they have. Um, I also picked up from uh, Snally Gaster Fibers. I picked up a Polaris Sock. 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon in the Bellatrix colorway, which is this great purple and gray. Obviously a Harry Potter reference. Um, I think she had some school colors yarn too. She had a whole Harry Potter theme going on um, and some other yarns too. But um, And then I also picked up a, uh, a ball of West Yorkshire Spinners, which obviously is not local, but <laughs> West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. Um, this great green. This is one of those yarns that it's it's a bit um, crunchier than I usually work with, but I want, really want to try that style for socks because a lot of people seem to like it. Um, so I picked up some of that. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon. It doesn't say what kind of wool. It just says it contains 35% blue face luster. So I don't know what the rest of it is. But I picked that up. And then I picked up my favorite skein of the day um, from Lovely Yarns. Um, I loved all the shops. I loved all the yarn I picked up. But this one just has me so excited. And I actually saw this dyer on um, WTF Knitting. He also picked up a skein uh, from her. So this is Molly Girl. Um, it says, business in the front, party under black, which makes me think it probably glows under black light. Um, and it's the baseline which is fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the colorway is a certain shade of green. And it is this black and white with pops of neon green. And it is so pretty. Oh, I love this yarn. I am so excited to make some awesome socks out of this. Um, that'll work really well for like a black light. <laughs> I think that'll look really cool. So that's why I picked up at Lovely Yarns. Again, I hung out for a little while and I got to knit and chat with some ladies. Um, I got to meet somebody who was coming in for the first time and she just moved into the neighborhood. So I'm super jealous of her that that's now her local yarn store. So my last stop on my yarn curl was the Neighborhood Fiber Company, um, which is a studio. They, um, I think they do mostly wholesale. And then they have a bit, they have like store hours that you can come in and buy their yarn. I was actually only their second customer of the day, so you can tell that's not the biggest part of their business, <laughs> but um, they are in an old firehouse 
And actually just in the last week, um, they were talking to me about it. So they went ahead and made the change. Um, the, uh, they bought out the space upstairs, uh, which is where they've moved offices, and then they've moved the store itself up there too. So the, the yarn buying is all upstairs, and then the downstairs is um, their studio. So while I was sitting there, they were both in the same space, um, but I got to watch them, you know, winding yarn and dyeing yarn, and it was just really cool. So, so I picked up a few things there. First of all, I picked up the shirt that I'm wearing. So it's a Neighborhood Fiber Company shirt. Um, and the back says, if you can see it, ball so hard. Hopefully you can see that. I'm, if not, I'll take a picture and <laughs> print it in. Um, I've decided I need more knitting shirts though. So if I see them, then I'll, I'll take the opportunity to grab them. Um, I also picked up some yarn. I picked up, um, this is a color I actually saw at the Maryland Sheep and Wall, um, in their, in their booth. It's a little bit... It's showing up a little bit darker in the camera. It's not quite so blue. It's more teal. Um, yeah, it's more of a teal color. Um, but I can't think. So, it, so it's a color I saw in Maryland Sheep and Wool, and I, I wanted it at the time. I just, I bought a lot of yarn, so <laughs> I didn't want to buy one that I didn't necessarily know what I was going to use it for. Um, but I saw it and it was in their sale bin, I think because it's a, a knotted, um, knotted skein. So, um, so it was half off and I was like, oh, I got to get it now. So <laughs> it's Rustic Fingering, which is 100% Superwash Merino and it is the Ward Circle, um, colorway. So I picked that up. Um, I also picked, uh, I, I really utilized their sale bin. I loved a lot of the yarns they had in there and they were half off, which you can't beat. Um, so this one is also Rustic Fingering. This is a green colorway. It's called Fells Point. Um, I'm pretty sure that they uh, name their colorways after areas in Baltimore because um, I recognize some of these names. <laughs> um, and then I also picked up a dark green, which is called um, Rock Creek Park. It's more of an emerald uh, green, very tonal, gorgeous. So I picked those three up and then I picked up one of their kits. They have, um, they have a bunch of kits where they put together yarn colors, um, intended for specific, uh, specific patterns. So I picked up the three color cashmere cowl kit. Um, so it's this one here. It's got the dark purple, light purple, and a green in it. I'm pretty sure this dark purple, um, is the same or very similar to what I used for my um, exploration station. Um, and then that was, oh, and then I also picked up um, a bag. They gave me a bag for my purchase, which tells you I spent a bit of money on my purchase. Um, and I picked up a button. I really like when uh, yarn stores have um, something store specific, like a button or a pin that I can um, collect. Because, I, you know, I like to to be able to represent them uh, when I'm out and about. And I like, I just like to decorate my yarn bag. So, um, so I picked that up. And then I picked up some uh, Eucalyn, uh, little, sam not sample, but small, small packs of uh, wool wash. So I got that to try out. Um, and that was really it for, um, for my, for my acquisitions, for my yarn trip. Like I said, I took some video, so I'll ho hopefully be able to insert uh, some of that. So uh, let me give some podcaster love uh, to let you know who I'm watching right now. Um, I am all caught up on a lefty knitter, which is Aquila, um, Aquila de Hun. Um, she had this fantastic tip that she put on uh, Instagram. And I should probably be embarrassed that I've never thought of it before. But she said she was watching podcasts at one and a half speed, um, which is such a genius idea. I, you know, I've done things like that before in the past. Like I've listened to audio podcasts faster or like online class lectures, things like that. Like it makes sense. You just kind of speed it up a little bit. You get through it faster. Um, but it's such a genius idea for a knitting podcast too, because I don't want to miss whatever they're talking about. Um, but it's also, you know, a big time commitment to, especially watching them the way that I do, because I watch back episodes. So I'll watch them one right after another and try and catch up. Um, so being able to watch more of them in a shorter amount of time, um, is just really great. So, uh, so on top of loving her podcast, um, <laughs> I also got that great tip from her. 
Um, I've also been watching the Dog Dare podcast um, with David. Um, again, I started the beginning, so I am way behind, but I, I'm watching uh, his old episodes, and I, I love his vibe. I love um, his creativity. I like his, um, I don't want to say creep factor because that just sounds gross, but like his, his room of requirements and it's just oddities and he said ex eccentricities. Um, it's just, he seems like he'd be a really, really fun person to, to, to get to know. Um, I've also been watching the grocery girls. Um, I finally caught up to the point where they start recording out of their kitchen. Um, so that tells you how, how far back I am. Uh, so I've been catching up on their episodes. Um, I've also been watching The Bakery Bears in Earnest. Um, hey, kiddo. Um, I've also been watching The Bakery Bears in Earnest. Um, I did sign up to be a patron for their podcast, so I got all the extra content now. Um, that So it's even more to go through to, <laughs> to get caught up. But it's just a really cool idea. I really like um, their whole patron community. Because uh, you can tell they put a lot of work into their podcast. So I'm fully supportive of that. Um, so Tilda has decided to join me for some podcast about today. <laughs> um, they just woke up from a nap, so a bit of a curly head. Um, so I'm also watching my old standbys. Um, I'm watching Inside Number 23 with Katie. Uh, I'm watching Stranded Stranded Podcasts with Amy. Um, also, um, oh, I can't remember their names. I don't know. There's a bunch of other ones that I, that I watch as soon as they come out. I think I've decided I need to update how not update i think i've decided i need to take a different approach when watching new podcasts that i'm discovering that have been around for a while um i think i'm gonna watch their latest episode first <laughs> and then go back and watch the old ones because well first of all I, I get to see what their podcast has evolved into so i can kind of see how things change because sometimes it takes people a little while to get into a groove with podcasting so the earlier episodes um you know i may Start watching an earlier episode and decide, no, this one's not really for me and I won't continue watching. Um, but if I see what it's become, then I can see how it's going to evolve and I can, you know, make a decision on whether uh, I'd like to stick with them and, <laughs> and get to watch them. So so that's going to be my new approach. I have checked out a couple of other new ones. Um, I'll probably talk about them next time just because I didn't write them down this time. Um, but yeah, so that's my podcast for love. Okay, so I have two more things and then we'll be done, I promise. Well... You've still got video at the end to watch. <laughs> this is a long one, sorry. Um, but first of all, I alluded to something that I'm saving up for um, on the last episode and I forgot to talk about it. Uh, so Flying Fibers, which as you know, if you watch this podcast, is my favorite local yarn store that is not super local to me anymore, but I still love them. Um, they are putting together a trip next summer to go to Scotland. Um, it's super exciting it's like a nine day excursion there's all of these places that we're going to go um all like tours of things and it's just it's a really exciting itinerary um it's really exciting that they're even doing it um and i have definitely put my name up for that so <laughs> so um so everything's getting finalized for that but so that's next summer um i'm gonna be going over to scotland with with that great group of ladies um, I don't think that there's any spots left, so sorry if you hear about this and you get really excited about it, um, but I think they're planning to do more trips in the future, so if you would be interested, um, I would definitely recommend, you know, follow their shop and, and their Instagram. They also have um, a flock. They have their own flock of uh, rare breed, rare breed uh, English breeds, English sheep. Um, so, so their, their Instagram is a lot of fun. Just, you know, lots of sheeps, sheeps and shop updates. Um, so if they do future trips, then you'd be able to, to hear about those. Um, so that is the big exciting thing that I'm saving up for. And then lastly, I wanted to say, um, first of all, thank you to everybody who has watched, who has left comments, who has subscribed and liked any videos. Um, it's so much fun to do this. Um, especially to become a part of the community. I mean, that's that's why I do it. I like to be able to interact with people. Um, I, in my yarn desert that I'm in, um, closest local yarn store is half an hour away. It turns out they're actually closing, so I'm not even I'm sure. Gonna go one, You're going to go now? Okay. Can you go watch with Eric? Yeah. Okay, have fun. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. 
so my closest local yarn store is about half an hour away and they're actually closing so I'm not even sure what my closest local yarn store is at that point um but she's retiring or the the owner is retiring I think um so anyway so there's not a whole lot of yarny goodness around nearby um there's not some close knitting nights there's not things that I can do to really engage with other knitters um, so I really count on social media and podcasts um, to be able to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you to, to everyone who's um, become a part of that community for me. That being said, um, as of this recording, we are at 91 subscribers, <laughs> which is so close to 100. So I've decided I'm going to do a 100 subscriber giveaway. Um, I don't have all the details yet because we're not actually at 100 yet. So when we're at 100, I'll, I'll, I'll do the giveaway. Um, I'm still figuring out if I want to do it as an Instagram giveaway again or if I want to do a Ravelry um, giveaway. I'm leaning toward that. Um, so if you're not a part of the Ravelry group yet, please go in and join there. It's the Just One End podcast group. Um, and I, I think that's probably where I'll do it. Um, if you would like to, though, please leave a comment and let me know what your preferred giveaway process is. Um, if you're a podcaster, let me know how you prefer it on your end as the person doing the giveaway, what you, what you like about certain, you know, doing it on YouTube, doing it on Ravelry, doing it on Instagram, however you organize your giveaways. That would be really helpful information to have. So, um, so if you'd like to go ahead and leave a comment. Um, if you want to comment about something else, please feel free. <laughs> um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Let's see if we can get to a hundred, uh, before the next episode. And, um, that's it for me. So I will see you next time. Bye. I am starting my personal yarn crawl. I am on my way to Woolworks in Baltimore first. Um, then the plan is to go to Lovely Yarns. Uh, then I'm going to find a light rail station to park, hop on the light rail and hit up Neighborhood Fiber Company before finishing up at Camden Yards to uh, do the anthem and the um, seventh inning stretch, This Land is Your Land. So, it should be a very exciting day. Off we go. Okay, so I just stopped at Woolworths, which was my first stop on my personal yarn curl. Uh, I picked up some goodies, which you'll see, well, you'll probably have seen since I'm planning to throw this at the end of the episode. Um, I got to meet the lovely Ashley of The Misadventures in Knitting. I was so glad that she was there. Um, the Misadventures in Knitting audio podcast. Um, they have five episodes, and I think she said they'll put their next one out in just a couple weeks, so yay! Um, next up is Lovely Yarns, 
which is a little bit further down the road, and then we go to the next one. I've just stopped in at Lovely Yarns and they were lovely. <laughs> it's a great little shop. I picked up some goodies that you'll see. Next stop is Neighborhood Fiber Company and then on to the game. finished up my yarn crawl at the Neighborhood Fiber Company. Hopefully you can hear me because now I'm out on the street. End of the yarn tour though, off to the game.